Well, once again, uh, thank you for coming to our weekly uh, press conference. Um, uh, just a recap of last week. Um, you know, was trying to get you know back on track uh, after that tough loss to Alcorn. Uh, had a road win against Jackson State, thirty-three thousand plus uh, in the game. Uh, first time um, actually playing on grass this year, which was uh, uh, we had one or two calls because our footing was bad uh, in the defensive back area, just trying to get our foot out of that thick grass. Offensive, we played with a lot of new guys. Uh, Jed Evans did a great job for us, uh, driving the ball down offensively, and uh, his first start at quarterback here. <coughs> um, uh, you know, and Blackshear started at center for us, and uh, you know, and was able to keep the ball off the ground. Um, uh, we had uh, one turnover, possibly two, uh, when we called a quarterback sneak on the goal line, and probably shouldn't have never put him under center, but. Normally, that's what you do in that case, but, <clears throat> you know, we worked through it, put them in a bad situation trying to come off the one-yard line, and we was able to maintain field position the uh, rest of the game uh, because of that miscue ended up working in our favor. Coach, what are some things y'all did to kind of, you know, help Jet kind of get acclimated to starting and um, help him manage the game and properly? Well, the, the thing about it, you know, Jet has been here since the summer, so he knows the plays. Uh, you know, it was just getting some of the rust off him from last year. You know, he didn't play a lot last year. I don't think he came back to Mississippi Valley until the last four games. And he didn't play, you know, much at that time. So we, we wanted to minimize the throws down the field, uh, get the ball out of his hand. Uh, but more importantly, we had to match that up to Blackshear. Blackshear, true freshman, third, uh, third string uh, center on our depth chart. We wanted to make sure that we had to change with some protection so that now we didn't have, we couldn't mic the protection as we normally would. We had to slide the front to compensate for him. And, you know, we didn't have the, you know, we didn't know that he was going to be out until Friday. So it was a lot of uh, changing and a lot of things that we had to do to be able to, uh, you know, get them through it where everything timed up and we could protect and move the ball down the field. Coach, this is a, uh all right, yeah, for you guys, this is the second off week. You just don't get two off weeks every single season. How are you going to manage this extra time? Well, you know, uh, unlike the first off week, you know, we're, we're out there now with <coughs> four and five new guys in place. So where the week prior we rested and tried to recover, <coughs> now is the stretch. I mean, whatever bruise you have now, you don't, you don't carry it with you until Christmas. Uh, we got to find ways to execute and practice, you know, uh, you know, get our timing down with the new guys. That's that's what we've been working on, and um, you know, from quarterback to O line to D line. I mean, we got some new faces out there, so we got to work on getting timing together by next week. And just to piggyback off that, um, with the extra time and having all those new faces, kind of how how good is it coming off a win that you get to have some morale about yourself going into it with those new guys? I mean, anytime you can come off a win is good. I mean, uh, you know, a loss to Alcorn, you know, um, you know, you would think like the whole season was over. I mean, from just the campus spirit, uh, just the spirit around. I mean, but we were just, at that time, we was 0-1 in the conference. I mean, conference play had just started. Uh, you would want to have won that game to put, you know, your destiny in your own hands uh, for us going down the stretch. But there's, a, you know, a lot of conference football to be played and, to be able to go into this off season with you know this off <laughs> week with a uh, win, uh, it, it's good. It keeps the morale, keeps the spirit going. There's a lot of people at this point, one in fives and one in threes in conference, and uh, you know they're thinking making uh, Christmas and holiday plans. You know, so we, we you know we still in the race and we're still preparing and uh, preparing for it to be the such. Coach, I'm sure you all are beginning to prepare, prepare for Alabama uh, and uh, with. Uh, what, what are some things that um, you think y'all did well last week um, that you might want to improve on or um, build upon going into a &M? Well, I think last week was the first week we, um, I mean, in a, in, it was the first week in a couple of weeks that we rushed for over 100 yards. Uh, and when you can't run the football, I mean, it's tough. And uh, we have to build on that. We have to find ways to, to run the ball. What that does, it helps us eat up clock. 
But more importantly, it keeps the other offense off the field. So we have to find ways to run the football. What does it say about the, the talent and the threat of um, Michael Jefferson for number of season kind of coverage and blanket he did? Well, you know, anytime they if they put they only got eleven out there, so if Mike got two and somebody got a mismatch somewhere, you know, the key is is coaching, you know, coaching the patience with that. That you know, that you're doing your job. When they double cover you, you, you may didn't have but one reception or you may not even get a ball, but now Booker, who half the people didn't even know he was here, is now, you know, he gets 100 yards receiving. So, you know, keep demanding the double team. And now, you know, when they move the double team to the other side, now we'll start back throwing the ball and finding a way that we can balance it out. What, what are some things you, you all expect to get um, out of that, Alabama a and um, defensively? You know, they're going to play us aggressive. I mean, whatever that we see on film, uh, as I told the guys, if they hadn't been coming off all year, they're going to come off when they play us. If they hadn't been covering, they're going to cover. If the blitz uh, been stopping before it gets through the line, it's going to get through the line. So, you know, I'm looking for a lot of intensity, a lot of energy, uh, big atmosphere. You know, guys are going to play up. So we got to, you know, find ways to combat combat that. Coach, coming off uh, last week's game, Jet played well. Was the, was the playbook wide open for him? Or did no. you guys have to temper it for him? No, I mean – even though Jet could have probably done more, but we still had a center that, that snap starts with him. So if we can't protect it, and we've seen situations where guys running wide open down the field, but the quarterback's on his back. So, you know, everything was based off of what we could do from protection, and then we worked our way out. And how happy were they that knowing I got my third-string quarterback and my third-string center playing, but to still come out with a big road win, how – I mean, that, it's, it's major anyway. When, I mean, normally it's hard to go in somebody home, come and beat them with your one. But then to be able to go in there with two guys that hadn't played and they're starting in their first game and it's a homecoming, that's, that's, that's tough. And, but it's good to know that these guys were paying attention. Uh, they was attentive and that, you know, that we got guys that, that uh, can, can step in if need be as we go down the stretch. Coach, how, how opportunity, well, how, how not lucky, but – how crucial is it that y'all get this extra off week here to allow for KD to continue his rehab and then watch you show up for Kansas City? Well, the key is, uh, you know, as I shared with KD, is you know, uh, you know, we you got to come back, you got to embrace what's going on, and now get back to you know the play that he was playing early on in the season. Uh, the same thing with Call, you know, Call, you know, he had, he's still out, so. You know, all those guys got to get back. We got to get all those guys back and get them ready to go because we're going to need them to win these games going down the stretch. Coach, can you tell me a little bit about the kind of the magnitude and like the cultural epicenter of the Mexican Classic and, you know, what it means for the guys and kind of just the, the state, I guess? I mean, this is uh, anytime you can uh, get 80,000 people uh, collectively in and out of a game to, to come for a football game. Uh, you know, they don't come for science projects. They don't come for spelling bees. Uh, they come for football events. And uh, anytime you can get that kind of platform to promote your brand, your football program, your university, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it says a lot about the city, but it, more importantly, it says a lot about the tradition of the classic, is that the consistency that everyone knows the last weekend in October is the classic. So you people get to plan for it. It's always in the same place. Uh, and the atmosphere is just unbelievable.